We're here today to talk about Robotech Battlecry. Uh, the game has been in development at Vicious Cycle for some time now. And it's notable because while it isn't the first Robotech game to be developed by a North American company, it is the first one ever to be released in the U.S. The game is based on the popular 1980s uh, animated show uh, known as Macross. Um, in the game, you, you play the role of a Jack Archer, who's a, a pilot for the RDF. Um, and as fans of the series know, um, the pilot Veritech, uh, which, is, which is basically three mechs in one. Uh, normally it looks just like a fighter plane, but it has the ability to transform into a, into a walking robot uh, as well as into a, what, what they call a guardian mode, which is kind of a mix between the Remember, robot and the plane. So essentially the Veritech is a three-in-one spaceship. Um, and each of these three different modes have different special abilities and different, uh, different means of, of attack. Uh, the fighter, for instance, has a, has a primary mode of a machine gun and a secondary mode of missiles. The Guardian, too, has a primary machine gun and secondary mode of fire uh, of missiles, but the Guardian's missiles are, are slower, more agile, and weaker than the faster and more powerful uh, fighter's missiles. The Battleoid, however, has no missiles whatsoever. His primary and secondary mode of fire are both machine guns, uh, although he has the unique advantage of being able to track enemies uh, anywhere on screen with his uh, primary mode of fire. Battlecry is composed of five distinct chapters, uh, and each of these chapters has between half a dozen to around a dozen uh, distinct missions. Most of these missions are uh, designed around the actual episodes from the Macross TV show, although there are some that are just completely unique to the game, though all the, ga all the missions in the game are, are, are set within the Macross universe. Looking at any screenshots of the game, or, or watching any of this video, uh, and it's clear to tell that the designers really captured the essence of, of the whole of Robotech look and feel. To mimic the look and feel of the, of the anime, Battlecry uses uh, cel-shaded graphics and, and, bright, and a bright and colorful palette to, to draw its environments and, and all, its, uh, all its mechs. Additionally, all the mechs that were included in the show are, are available in the game, although you can only pilot the Veritech. But um, just flying around, you can, you can easily make out destroids on the ground. You, uh, you'll do battle with uh, all sorts of Zentradi uh, mecha, like, uh, like officer pods, battle pods, scout pods, fighter pods, even male and female power armor. Some missions even have you going up against these massive uh, Zentradi cruisers that, that were uh, uh, a staple of the original show. The game's combat mechanic plays a lot like Panzer Dragoon, in that you can lock onto a single enemy using your primary modifier, but multiple enemies using your uh, missile, so long as you have the attack button depressed. You have an unlimited amount of ammo in the game, although it does take a while to regenerate. But while the game certainly looks good, at least while it captures the, the, uh, the essence of, of Macross, the animated series, it does have a few problems. Specifically, the missions, though, though there are a ton of them, are all pretty much the same. Um, in fact, oftentimes you wonder if you're just playing the same mission over and over. Most of the combat is either relegated to, uh, to aerial dogfights or low-level flying between uh, city walls or, uh, or in between tunnels. And even though there are a lot of missions, um, the game takes these two or three environment types and two or three you know, mission types and spreads them across 40-plus uh, uh, individual levels. And so you can start to see how repetitive this, this, this process of you know, dogfighting, hostage rescue, escort, dogfighting, hostage rescue, escort becomes after a while. There are other problems in the game that fans of the series will, will also take issue with. Uh, the plot, for example, unfolds through the use of uh, in-engine cutscenes and these static uh, pieces of artwork. And uh, this artwork is, I mean, to be frank, horrible. And it's drawn in a manner that's completely, in a style that's completely different than the, than the cel-shaded and bright and colorful graphics of the game itself. Meanwhile, the, the in-game cutscenes are, are stiffly animated and they never last more than two to three seconds. The sound in the game is, is a mix of good and bad. For instance, the music that plays during the, the menu and the interface is sampled from the actual uh, series soundtrack. Whereas uh, the music that plays during the actual missions has been recomposed for some reason. And uh, the end result is, is, is music that might sound familiar to, to a fan of the show, but for the most part it kind of sounds like um, a high school band practicing. The sound effects also will get repetitive. Uh, there's only one sound for, for firing your missiles and one sound for firing your machine guns. And since those are the only two weapons that you have, um, it, it just gets old real quick. And, and uh, same goes for Jack Archer's voice. It's interesting to note that Jar Jack Archer is voiced by Cam Clark, who did the voice for uh, Max Sterling in the TV show. But um, 
he just sounds so monotone in the game. And he'll come in and, and say these canny one-liners uh, after shooting like a number of, of Zentradi battle pods. And to do that, they, they pop down the music so he can say these one-liners. And he only has five or six, and they all sound just so bad that it's really a shame that, uh, that the production value of the sound wasn't, wasn't on par with that. Bit. The game has some replay value in that uh, it has about a dozen multiplayer missions and most of those are locked initially so you have to progress with the single player game to unlock them. Um, you can also unlock different Veritech uh, and different paint schemes. Even though there are different attributes assigned to each Veritech like um, speed and targeting and missile power, um, you'll rarely notice um, those differences within the actual game. It's really a shame that Battlecry does have these, uh, these problems and its repetitive missions and its uh, sluggish controls and, and low production values and its sound and cutscenes because fans of the series you know, have been waiting so long for, for, for a good Robotech game for so long, for just a Robotech game for so long. Battlecry was supposed to be this momentous occasion for fans of Robotech. Um, and while it's still a very competent game, it's clearly just a mediocre shooter that, that's carried on the strength of, of the very memorable Robotech devices. So fans of Robotech should probably still pick up Battlecry because it is memorabilia and memorabilia should be collected, although um, you certainly will not find anything revolutionary here.